it always feels close up there until until you hear someone say, and you're winner too, you know? I swear to God, this guy lives in the bathroom. Hey! Oh, hey. Captain! I'm just gonna fist bump that one. Hey, how, how you, you doing? Knuckle. Lou! Good to see you. Listen, I can respect what you did when you were the commissioner of the league. And I actually am very fascinated with this nuke move you got going on. It's pretty genius, isn't pretty it? Pretty genius, and it's also gonna backfire in your face. Because I manage the champion of the world, primetime Paul Ayama. I'm about to manage the next IG champion in the world, Smasher, you know who he is. And after that happens, you know what your little nuke is gonna do to you? I'm gonna take Guy, cause you know he wants to be in the dungeon. I'm gonna take McWeenie, and you're gonna be left with that other guy, I can't even remember his name. Dude, let me just tell you something, Luke. You can talk all you want, and I appreciate the fact that you manage a champion. A guy that came from nowhere, a flash in the pan, by the way, a guy who's gonna crack under the pressure, a man that is never gonna do what you say. And let me just tell you something. Do you know what family means? Family's forever. Family is forever. And you, my friend, I admit, your name's not Lou, okay? I understand yeah, I've been your trying name. to no, tell you this, for no, I, know, I understand, long. I get that, I get that. And I appreciate what you're saying. But my genius, my vision, is something that you, my friend, will only learn to appreciate later. And I know your name. Your name's Ralph. And I'm happy to call you Ralph on me. You, you do well. I mean, this guy, I don't think he still respects me. Don't. Gentlemen, and welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. We are in the thick of the ultimate showdown singles division playoff tournament format today. It is Ben the Boss Bateman versus Paul the Powder Keg. Preston and I and Mark Baby Carrots Ellis joined by some guy named Ken Knapsack, minor league baseball announcer turned showdown legend. Uh, good, happy to be here, Mark. That's uh, everything you just said was a lie, but I enjoyed uh, enjoyed it anyway. Uh, happy to be here. I love tournaments. I, I was never good at tournaments. The only tournament I won was how fast and uh, you know which uh, candidate was to get uh, rejected by the cheerleader in high school. And I won it every year, four years running. Uh, but this is a tournament for a different kind of prize. It's a tournament for Schmodown glory. And round two is where things start to get really interesting. Things start to get serious. The competitors know that glory is just over that them thar hill, and we've got. Uh, two competitors looking to one, I think, establish himself like uh, the player he always thought he was. That's yep. Ben Bateman, and knew uh, knows deep down that he is. And then another one who is a veteran around movie trivia and the digital media world, but still relatively new in uh, the, the the schmodown. That's Paul Preston, and that is an intense kind of matchup. Today. When you walk into Ken Knapsack's house, he has a life-size statue of Yosemite Sam, and in his immortal mm. words, filth mm. far and flying between these two, yeah. and they are not at a shortage of confidence right. or words when it comes into this matchup. Paul Preston, newer on the scene than Ben Bateman, who's been right. around the showdown for a long time, but Preston comes in and he instantly has that veteran feel to him where both of these guys really know how to play the game. What I mean by that is they get the strategy. They're not gonna be phased by, do I check to multiple choice? Do I make those kind of calls. It's just a question of how much knowledge is actually inside their skull. Yeah, look, I'll tell you what, Paul Preston, I've been to Paul Preston's house. This guy's been around the business for a while. He has a fire pit. He can afford a fire pit. Really? That's how That's how long he's been around and he's a good, calm guy, uh, but I, I'm excited to see in this matchup, I mean, I think, I wonder if he's starting to taste the kind of glory that a, a performer and a, and, a, and a trivia veteran, he runs trivia shows around town, that if he's like, oh, it's right there, it's right there, uh, you know, and, and does that start mounting up uh, in his head that kind of pressure uh bateman the horseman I, I hate to admit it the what are we up to five we, we, we got five horsemen five. it's the four horsemen of the apocalypse one of them has a plus one that's a that's a it's a funny skit that's Thank a funny you. skit Thank you're doing you. there um yeah you know as i said before bateman 
knows he's great. Sometimes his losses, uh, you know, get, get in his head maybe, or maybe he's thinking, I, I haven't got to that title. This is where he can really, really lay that claim. In. And, and I, I, I hate to give the horseman credit, but I like that Ben Kidd, and he's coming here to play today. Well, let's see what each member of their respective faction had to say pre-show. Take a look. Ben Bateman will move on in the tournament. Well, coming up next, no slouch. Oh. Everybody show up for the exit strategy that he's got for leaving the tournament, all right, when he takes on the powder cake. Hey, here we are, Preston versus Bateman. And you know what? There's only room for one, what Ken Knapsack calls a tall, strapping lad here in the Schmodown. The powder keg is no joke. He's becoming one of these Schmodown pros now that people really want to see compete. Total trivia ownage. I don't know who this guy is. What's his name, Preston Wilson or something? You know, you, you come out as a rookie, you do some good things, but you don't win a title. But I'm here in my third season in the Schmodown to show you really what I'm all about. I've played good, I've played bad. Today, I'm just here to play to win. And now he's gonna have Paul in the second round, two rookies back to back, but these are rookies that are coming to play. It's time for new blood, all right? You're wearing a Wimbledon visor from a garage sale. Not true, pal. Kirsten Dunst herself gave me this hat at the Wimbledon premiere. And then we made out, as far as you know. Outer keg, Paul Preston. Where'd you get that from, the Looney Tunes? Give me a break, Paul. This is the future of the league right here. We saw the potential in this guy. So he needs a belt around his waist. Standing next to a winner, another one right here. Two of the greatest of all time and the greatest faction of all time. And I don't care. You like me, you don't like me, who you're rooting for. All I know is when I walk out of here today, I'll be one step closer to that belt. One step closer to one of those two belts at the end of the season I keep talking about. But you talk about a master strategist when yeah. it comes to playing the game, right. figuring your way out around a board. Ben Bateman, perhaps one of the best we've ever seen. Ben Bateman is a master at movie trivia. I will gladly call him Master Bateman. But I'm the real Master Bateman. And by the end of this, you're going to call me the Master Bateman. So let's find out who the real Master is. Master Preston or Master Bateman? Jerk off. Where's the swear jar? All right, well, Kent, like I said, the guy with the fireplace, mm -hmm. which I news to me, the guy who actually fire has pit. a yep. way for Santa fire Claus pit. to come. Oh, yeah, it's no, a fire, fire pit. pit. He okay. has a nice backyard. This is he's an established, proper gentleman. That guy is coming in with a boatload of confidence. But Ben mm -hmm. Bateman, he seems to feel like he's the veteran in this matchup, so maybe he's got a little bit of an edge there. But as soon as we do the introductions, they're seated there. It's zero zero, right. and who came to play more? We are going to go to the tail of the tape now, but before we go to the tail of the tape, I would like to give a huge shout out to a competitor today, and that would be Mr. Paul Preston. He's fighting much larger battles than just this silly little movie trivia game. If you guys want to get more information on how you can help Paul and his wife Karen fight her battle with cancer, you can join the Army right now. You can check out the Movie Trivia Showdown fan Facebook page, or you can check out our Twitter feed on ways that you can donate and support and make sure that Paul and Karen continue their brave battle. <laughs> On a lesser note, Ken, we get to the tail of the tape. And Paul Preston, uh, he is good at action movies. He is good at Harrison Ford movies. Unfortunately, Harrison Ford, not yet a wheel wedge. How crazy is that? That's really I know. weird. The it, questions it, it, I could ask about Witness alone. Yeah, I know. I know. John Book was his character's <laughs> name in that. How about Ben Bateman? What is that young man good at? Bateman's strengths are looking damn fine. Yep. Good in a suit. Good uh, head of hair. Movie released. I, I hate his head of hair. It's, it's, it makes me so jealous. Uh, movie release dates. Let's not forget that's one of his strengths. And, of course, action movies. That's how we got on the landscape here. All right. Well, I am just about ready to go. Ken, do you have all your cards and your uh, coffees and your uh, desktops in order? I don't know what's happening with me today, to be honest, uh, but I think I'm ready. He went to a haunted hayride last night. It's time for the movie trivia showdown. <laughs> a little bit of southern twang came good. out of the accent there. That's that what good. happens when I hit the tequila before noon. Ken Knapsack will be doing the introductions at your ready. Uh, absolutely. You sound like the family scene in Elizabethtown. Here we go. Introducing first. With a record of three wins and one defeat and one KO. With his doorman at his side, Adam Witt. Representing the movie guys, 
It not looks like there's a no. velvet rope. Yeah, yeah, you got to get behind him. trying to get into this no. match, and he's no, not, not on the list. Here, well, sure, we got the kid. The kid. The kid's been in movies and stuff. Yeah, like he's trying to grease Palm. No. Higher, no. higher, more money. There's Paul Preston. Paul Preston, come out in. There's Paul, Paul Preston. Preston is on the list. He gets in. Boy, look at that. His compadre, uh, movie guy, didn't even have to look at his list look for that get one. that. The answer you're looking for is satisfaction. That's, nope, <laughs> nope. That's the only movie with a still relevant Bateman. Nope, um, nope. Yeah. Oh, sir, that's the well. We'll wait. It through. is a great film starring Justine Bateman and a younger Liam Neeson, although he's older than Justine in the movie. Uh, aren't they all? Uh, here we go. And his opponent with the record of six wins and five defeats with two KOs, representing the five horsemen. And accompanied to the ring by at least one of them in sweatpants, Tom Dignito. This is Ben the Boss. Big Ben! Well, Look at Dignito that. has a shirt Rook on. Is there. Merle's there. The team is out. The team is yeah, out. Dagnino. Dagnino's shirt alone uh, requires some kind of congressional hearing there with that chest hair coming out. Scandalous. All uh, right, everyone's on the field. Right, of play. Dagnino whispering last words of wisdom or asking Ben to loan him $10. That's actually a low number. Uh, uh, Ken, you better call this fair. Uh, right. Could someone help Abe Simpson yelling at the clouds over there? <laughs> We will get to the rules of round number one. Gentlemen, this is the ultimate showdown. It is a playoff format. The winner advances to round three, the loser goes home. However, it plays like a normal round number one, two, and three. In round number one, you're gonna hear eight questions. These questions are asked to the field of competitors. They come from eight different categories of movie trivia showdown know-how. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question and there is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask the question, you have about 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. Once we ask you by name to reveal your answer, show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. I'll remind each competitor, you have three usages of the JTE rule each throughout the duration of the three round match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want us to repeat it, you just want to buy yourself some more time, use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three round match match and I would like to say to both gentlemen I know that you're going through various personal things the both of you up there so thank you for showing up today and giving a game performance. nice to see both of these lads here playing through it Ken are they gonna take their sunglasses off no no they are not Ben how you feeling you ready to go let's do this Mark Paul Preston are you ready to perform smells like a barn in here with all the horsemen let's get this done so we can open the doors then let's get ready to schmo down Administering your first question is going to be Ken Knapsack, the voice of the Schenectady Mickeys. All right, I don't know what that reference is for once. All right. Question one comes in the category of action adventure, action slash adventure. What 2008 action thriller stars Shia LaBeouf and Michelle Moynihan? I like that LaBeouf kid. You see him on that hot wing show with that dynamic host? I did not see that. <laughs> <laughs> he ate hot wings on it? I, I don't go near hot wings Five, anymore. Four. After my incident. Three, two, one. Pens are down. Looking for answers starting with Bateman. Eagle Eye. That's correct. Eagle Eye. Now, it is Eagle Eye. <laughs> makes me think of the great Eagle Eye Cherry. Save tonight, right? Eagle Eye Charity, played by Ken Napsack in the 90s. Your next category is one decade earlier in the 1980s. These are 80s movies, and your question in what 80s comedy? Do Bill Murray and Harold Ramis enlist in the Army? It's kind of like our uh, relationship. <laughs> we got a Murray Ramis thing going on. Who's who? who? That's for the audience to find yeah, out. I figure that out. I, uh, I look like Ramis, and uh, it's because it gets them. Um, Are you excited? Five, I think I'm going to miss this one. Four. Your category? Three. Good call. Two. One. Pens are down. Paul. So did you miss any category? Uh, I get divorced if I don't get this one. Stripes. Stripes it is. <laughs> I also had stripes. Stripes, it is. Great performance by John Larroquette in that movie. 
John Laroquette. Night Court. We just do Night Court talk here tonight. Question three comes in the category of dramas. Dramas. Who played the lead role of Carol Aird in 2015's Carol? Harry Anderson, man. Harry Anderson. The late Harry Anderson. Uh, look, my uh, yeah. my football team just won. Oh, Big sports. Win. I love it. Big win. Five, four, Big. three, two, one. Pens are down. Look for answers starting with Ben. Kate Blanchett. That is correct. Kate Blanchett. That All is right. correct. <laughs> These gentlemen are perfect so far. Let's see if they can keep it going with animated movies. Movies drawn by hand or on a computer this day and age. Mm -hmm. In Toy Story 4, Tony Hale voices the spork that Woody tries to rescue. What is the spork's name? You see any of these uh, these these Toy Stories? Uh, no, never seen a Toy Story, but I'm really good at the game on uh, at the California Adventure. It's uh, I, extraordinarily good. Is at it, it a game of chance? No, you just yank a cord. Four, three, <laughs> two, one. Well, you know how to do that. Pens are down. <laughs> Paul. Forky. <laughs> that is correct. Forky. <laughs> it is forky. Forky. Oh, and had it, too. I practiced for Toy Story in the shower. It was old, All right. it was old cord yanker knapsack again. <laughs> uh, question five comes in the category of crime. Crime, using pictures glorifying criminals. Uh, first question. Johnny Depp played real-life gangster Whitey Bulger in what 2015 film? You know, I saw something history about uh, Whitey Bulger recently. Yeah. So his ex-girlfriend right. is just, just like living the sweet life. Oh. Walking dogs. Yeah. TMZ approached her. She was very nice. Mm, the dead. dog's yeah. cute. Four, three, two, one. Ben's are down. Look for answers starting with Ben. Black Mass. That's correct, sir. Black Mass. We Black got perfect mass. rounds for both these guys so far. It's like we don't even have to be here, Ken. Yeah, you want to finish that story at Barney's afterwards? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Category is in the world of comedies. <laughs> 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 What comedy franchise features the bumbling Inspector Clouseau? Mm. Speaking of bumbling, I'm sorry for my intro today. I, I, I just sat down. I didn't know what was going on. I, what are you talking about? You, you should be the, the, the more on top you. of the game, man. Yeah, I right. would dare say all the YouTube comments Five, are positive four, in your direction. Three, two, one. Pens are down. Looking for answers, starting with Mr. Paul Preston. The Pink Panther. That's correct, sir. The Pink Panther. Yeah. Look at this, Mark. Pink Panther. Mark. Six to six. That's right. Through six questions means we have two uh, perfecto uh, players up there. That's right. We are two questions away from perfect rounds across the board. Ken, can they get their next question in the world of horror thriller? Absolutely. Whee, question. Whee, whee. So that sounds like me practice from board, uh, the boardwalk game. Uh, question seven comes in the category of horror thriller. Horror slash thriller. Who directed 2015's The Gift? Have What's you seen the comments that the kids leave about you I don't, when you I, announce? They I haven't love you. They're, they're, they're over me. I haven't gone to YouTube comments since I left 15 for Lazy Sunday in 2006. Oh, treat yourself. Uh, five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. We got one for Ben. Who directed 2015's The Gift? Yeah, they're big, they're big Knapsack fans. Uh, They've kind of accepted that I'm, I'm here at and least, like, at I, least I have to be is. here. At least someone is. Um, <laughs> Yep, five. Things going well otherwise. Four. I cried last night. Two. One. Pence down. Looking for answers starting with Ben Bateman. Joel Edgerton. That's correct. Joel Edgerton. We've got two All right. for All right. young Owen Lars. That's a very good pull. Yeah, in Owen Lars, and I hope he uh, shows up Kenobi. All right. Our next question is a Patreon question. <laughs> and... Boy, does this one warm my heart. We think the crowd's going to love it. This is a very special Patreon question we have today because we are wishing a happy wedding anniversary to Dana Jacoby and Victoria Lakiza. This one is for Dana and Victoria. This question is an anniversary gift from Victoria's husband, Dana. So happy Look anniversary that. to Dana and Victoria. May they live happily ever after. Ken, any advice for the lovebirds? Yeah, I'll tell you what. Get a good lawyer. Uh, don't uh, and nap sock. Don't let Mark Ellis sleep on your couch ever. And, Why not? Uh, just celebrate the good times. I need a place to crash. Are they from Can Are they from up in Canada? We'll figure out where they live. I'll, I'll, I'll be playing in that it's city. It's a PG soon. show, Ken. PG show. Thank you both for supporting the show and happy anniversary. In the category of fantasy movies, which is where I'm married, your question. In The Empire Strikes Back, to whom does Darth Vader say the following quote? I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Who's he talking to? 
Well, for me, that was what my second wife said to me, and that's what I said, <laughs> what I said up top. There is, there is a, a, a dark uh, Ken Knapsack past where you've been married four times. There's a dark Ken Knapsack future. Uh, three, <laughs> two, one. Pens are down for perfect rounds for both competitors. Paul Preston. Lando Calrissian. We got a perfect round. Lando Calrissian. We got yes, two it is. perfect rounds. Yes, it is. Oh, boy. Perfect rounds. Eight to eight. Yep. Look at that. So now we move to a bonus question. And this question, usually we just ask you and you just tell us. But because it was to both of you got a perfect round, let's play like a normal round one question. Write down your best attempt at an answer. Uh, Ken, you have the honor. And it doesn't look like we're straying too far from the fantasy science fiction universe. Right, absolutely. All right. Which 90s? Oh, I'm just getting told from the booth. This what do you was got? Ben Bateman's first perfect round. First, not true. Uh, no? Wow. He says no? He's okay. saying not true. All right, the, bur the pe person. Are you sure that's the booth in your ear? No, that is actually God. I've got the wrong message. <laughs> uh, um, in God singles, in things. singles, I'm being told. Um, mm. All right, doesn't matter. Edit Fun that fact. part out. Uh, what Fun 90s fact movie regardless. was the tagline? Which 90s movie has the tagline protecting the earth from the scum of the universe? All right, that was probably the longest read of a bonus question. With your fun little tidbit yeah, in there. Well, Frank, your fun little, Frank. I opened a chocolate bar, and oh, look, a fun fact that I learned. <laughs> Five, your little Bazooka four, Joe comic strip. Three, two. Can you repeat the question? One repeat coming down for Paul. Which 90s movie has the tagline, protecting the Earth from the scum of the universe? All right, if I ask you the other planets in the solar system, mm -hmm. which other planet is the most scummy, like the most... Oh, down. definitely Pacoima. Uh, we've got... Uh, <laughs> it's actually a, a lovely city in California. Five, four, they have an RV. three, two, one. Pens are down. Paul Preston. Men in black? That is correct. <laughs> also men in black. All, All right. right. Hey, they're wearing the sunglasses like the characters in the movie. Look at that. Look, Look at you at guys. That. I get a perfect round. He's getting a perfect round. Uh, Very well, original. You could have neuralized us all until you got those perfect rounds. We don't know what just happened, but we do know that it is round number two, and that is the wheel round. You take a look at that thar wheel, you see ten categories from ten different corners of movie, trivia, showdown, know-how. Each category contains four questions therein. Each question is worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Keep in mind, competitors, stealing is available in round number two. That out of the way. Paul, Ben, we are tied, and so we defer to the higher ranked competitor. That'd be Ben Bateman. Sorry, Paul. That's Ben Bateman. Ben, would you like to spin first or defer to Powder Keg? Via con Dios, Powder Keg. Go for it. That's a line from Point Break. I accept it. Well done. All right. All right. There we go. Uh, no hesitation. Nice. Spin is in. Spin is in. That was a, a nice good spin. spin by Paul. It's a spin that's not going to take all day. I appreciate that. Yeah. He could have spun that much harder if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad he didn't. Because we have lives to live, Ken. I got some. Uh, we have stuff to do. I got some mac and cheese congealing on the counter. I want to get to. Uh, this is oh, and he is we got a spinner's choice. Uh, spinner's choice. Spinner's choice. This is where it's all at. All right. So, what Paul, is, your category. What would you like to set that wheel to? It's your choice. He is going to go to director. <laughs> all right, Paul. Ken Napsack will be asking you your directorial questions. All right. um, four. Each one's worth two points. Here we go. You do get the one-point option. You have two JT rules left, named after famed Ecuadorian TriCaster operator Josh Tapia. All right. Question one. Who won Best Director Oscars for the classic films Mr. Deeds Goes to Town and You Can't Take It With You? Let's spin around his brain there. Thinking. Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. A, Billy Wilder. B, Frank Capra. C, Frank Lloyd. D, Victor Fleming. B, Frank Capra. That's correct for one point. Got it. Correct. He got it. All right. What popular actor was the director of 2018's mid-90s? Jonah Hill. That's correct for two points. All right. All right. Starting to feel his way around the category. Three-point lead for Paul Preston. Yeah, third question out of four. How many 
theatrical features have been directed by Kevin Costner. Ooh. Let's, uh, I'll give you 20 seconds on that. I'll take him. Always thinking we're going to need an answer, though, shortly. Count down here in five, four, three, two. Two. Incorrect <laughs> for a steal, Ben Bateman, for two points. Three. That's correct. Dancing with the Wolves, the postman, an open range. Open range. That's a two right. point steal for Ben there. He kind of took over Waterworld. He did, he did. You know, more uh, like three and a half. And he didn't direct Madeline Stone Revenge. That's, oh, wow. All right. Um, final question, Paul. Steven Soderbergh directed Gina Carano, Michael Fassbender, and Ewan McGregor in which 2011 film? Haywire. Two points right there for Paul Preston. I think I like that movie. 14 to 11. I remember enjoying that film, and so now it is 14 to 11. Yeah. Ben Bateman, a huge two-point steal, and let's see if he can capitalize on his newfound momentum with the spin of the wheel from the wheel, not the pegs. He knows the drill. He gives it a spin. He's under the weather for sure, but he's giving a game effort thus far. Mm -hmm. He's Spins looking at in. Scott Mance's face and thinking, I want those movie release dates. Yeah. I want them bad. But there's, I like some of these categories. We haven't Good had the Capri in a while. Yeah. Haven't had Apatow, my dear friend. Uh oh, it slides past it. Ken, I think he did it. What he wants. I think he just Does he did want it. that? Does he want that? Movie He's release sticking dates. With it. He is keeping. He's sticking with it. He's happy with it. His Movie manager, his manager is happy. Tom is dressed like a gangster going to a Denny's for breakfast with the FBI. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> FBI informant Tom Dagnino pumping his fist like he did something. Your first of four questions, Ben, in the world of movie release dates. In what year was Shutter Island released? Potential clues. You just kind of go to that point in your life, you know? Five, four, three, two. 2010. Two points Two for points. Ben Bateman. Pulled it in. Big one, big one, big one. He pulls within two one. within one. One point of Paul Preston. He can take the lead if he knows this next answer. Top Gun was released in what year? Boom, boom. 1986. Boom, boom. Thank you for not making me wait 15 seconds. Check my breath away. Oh my God, that, that Top Gun mm -hmm. Maverick trailer. Woo! All right, Ben, your next question. Your penultimate one in movie release dates category. What year was the Trouble with the Curve release? <laughs> Five, four, three, two. two. Repeat the question. Second one. Do that. In what year was Trouble with the Curve released? Ben Bateman has one JTE rule out. One. Paul Preston still has two. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to five, four, three, three two. two. Multiple choice. One. I can provide that. Is it A, 2012, B, 2013, C, 2014, or D, 2016? Two thousand twelve. Give him a point. A he point. got it. He wow. got it. Takes the lead. So now it's sixteen to fourteen. Paul Preston hanging in. We're definitely gonna have a highly contested round three, but Ben Bateman can pad his lead right now if he can get this last question in the world of movie release dates. Ben, your question. What year did Akira Kurosawa's highly influential masterpiece Seven Samurai release into American theaters? Good God, yo. Multiple choice. Is it A, 1959, B, 1952, C, 1954, or D, 1956? 1959. That is incorrect for a one-point steal, Paul. Was it 1959, 1952, 1954, or 1956? 
He stole a point from so Ben good. Bateman in movie release dates. Key, key, that key. alone is newsworthy, and that pulls Paul to within Does. one of Ben Bateman as we head into round three, Ken. Wow, that was quite a round. You know, these guys know their stuff, but it's a, you, you start breaking it down. You'd like to think so. Mm -hmm. All right, we believe we have a challenge. Is challenge? That, uh, we need Ben to verbally issue a challenge. The, his management team. Can I speak to my manager? His management team is yelling something uh, yeah. from the back. Well, okay. is, is this going is to be an yeah, official we're, challenge? Yeah, we're using the challenge. We are doing a challenge. Uh, we'll be right back with a review. All right, we are back with our ruling and Ken because mm -hmm. we had yeah. a number of different uh, celebrities coming up to the desk giving us their data from their right. chosen website. There's different websites that have different release dates for yeah. the first time that Seven Samurai made its appearance into American cinema. Some say 1954, some say as late as 1956. So unfortunately, we can't go on one more than the other. So what we're going to do is ask Ben a new last question for his round number two in the world of movie release dates. Uh, it's, uh, it's the only thing we can do. It's the only thing that we can possibly do. Yeah. One of the sites was scalisku.movieblog.net, but uh, right. we didn't take that one. All right, Ben. Uh, your question. What year saw Boris Karloff debut as Frankenstein and Bela Lugosi debut as Dracula in their respective movies? Five, four, three, two. 1931. Two points for Ben Bateman, and right. it right. was a worthy challenge it because a that's challenge. a three-point swing in essence. He has 18 points. Now, Paul Preston, now 14 points. Originally, yep. we were going in there. It was going to be 16 to 15, Bateman, and now it is 18 to 14 as we move into round uh, number three. A different setup. That's uh, They say that's what some good managers do. I've uh, never watched a match I've managed, so i got to give credit to Tom there. Um, Round number three works like this. Each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers can range from 1 to 20. Each number you give us corresponds to a different corner of movie trivia schmodown goodness. The first question you get asked is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your last one, should we make it that far, is worth five big points. Ben Bateman, because you have a four-point lead currently, we're going to get your three numbers. Again, these numbers can be anything from 1 to 20. What feels lucky, sir? 3, 7, and 17. 3, 7, and 17. Very popular numbers in round yeah. number three. Uh, Paul Preston, you got three numbers that are not those. 4, 8, and 14. Yeah! Look at that. Those are good numbers. Good numbers. I'm not even calling them back. Those are so good. Thank you, All manager. Right. And uh, mm. Paul's management has woken up here Whoa, in round three. Oh, doctor. All right. Paul, uh, Ken Napslag will be asking you your questions. Um, you chose number four. Mm -hmm. For your two-point question, Ken, what Four. are we looking at? Uh, Paul, your two-point question will come in the category of action Hard slash adventure. Right. Action adventure. Two-point question. Peter Weir directed Russell Crowe and Paul Bettany in what 2003 film? Master and Commander. We'll accept that one. That's it. Two points there. <laughs> wow. Paul pulls it within two of Ben Bateman, so we're staying with him for his three-point. If he gets this right, he's going to force the hand of Ben Bateman. Absolutely. You chose number eight. That category is Jodie Foster Pictures. I Jody like her. Foster Pictures. I like her. Three-point question. What 1976 comedy starring Jodie Foster and Barbara Harris was remade in 2003? Freaky Friday. That's a correct wow. three-point Answer. All right. Now we move on to Ben Bateman, who has successfully made it to round three, although he will not be having a technical knockout here today. He's got to answer at least one trivia question right to force the five-pointer from Paul Preston. Ben, you selected number three for your two-point question, and that corresponds to the world of Pixar, Pixar movies. And your question, what is the first and last name of the one-eyed green monster voiced by Billy Crystal in Monsters, Inc. Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. I can do that. That's your last JTE rule. 
What is the first and last name of the one-eyed green monster voiced by Billy Crystal in Monsters, Inc.? Mike Wazowski. Two points. Ben Bateman's back on top. And Paul Preston now is staring at a five-point question. That's right. He chose number 14. Number 14, that category is horror pictures. Horror Clarifying, I'm out of JTEs, right? You are out of JT rules. Five-point question in the category of horror. Paul Preston. Here we go. Who played the role of the husband whose wife cheats on him in the 1981 horror thriller, Possession? Five, four, three, two, Repeat the question. Who played the role of the husband whose wife cheats on him in the 1981 horror thriller, Possession? He's got one more JTE rule. One more. I saw 15 more seconds. That's right. As he rolls it over, going back to the 80s there in his head. 1980s, a great decade for horror. Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. Final one. Who played the role? of the husband whose wife cheats on him in the 1981 horror thriller, Possession. Five, four, three, two. George C. Scott. And your winner, Ben the Boss Bateman. Sam Neal. That'd be a young Sam Neal Young in that movie. Sam Neal. Sam Neal in possession. Great match played by both Ben and Paul Preston. Paul Preston deserved his red rope VIP entrance yeah. into this matchup, as did Ben Bateman. And Bateman advances to round number three. The semifinals, Ken, he's on his way possibly to an ultimate Schmodown Right, as we talked up top, this is a, a victory that Ben wanted to, uh, for himself. You always want to win, that's a given. But I think Ben's been around a long enough time where he okay. knows he needs something big on that resume uh, beyond just uh, a lot of fans and action army and all those things we know he's a tough competitor as far as paul preston he he has established himself this year as a legitimate threat for a lot of titles in the schmodown and, and today's match uh, proved no different he absolutely belongs here he's got a great presence and sometimes it's just that we roll the questions, and that's what happens. So uh, I, I hope to see more of them in 2020. Yeah, you, you talk about the action army, then you talk about movie guys. Can we see possibly just outside of Schmodown, just like a team up, like uh, maybe just like a huge live event that's the movie guys and the action <laughs> army, and they hang out, and yeah. I don't know, they take their shirts off and play volleyball or I something. Mean, That'd be I, a lot of I'm, fun to watch. I'm hoping to see that today in Burbank. So uh, it's, it's maybe, hot enough. maybe. We are almost set to, to hear from uh, the uh, folks all backstage. Paul, tough match out there today. Obviously didn't go your way. What are your thoughts on this? Well, clearly I have a lot on my mind. Um, yeah, first of all, I lost by a point and they argued for uh, getting a different question because two different answers came up, neither of which Ben guessed. <laughs> Letting it go. Um, so that's, there's a point. And uh, clearly I need a manager, so let, that, let, the, nuke, let the nuke know. Uh, but, you know, forget, forget all that. Um, I just want to say the fans of the Schmodown are the most amazing people in the world. Um, and for six months in this, uh, in this league to have people I don't know jump on, on Skype last night who make reaction videos and then come together to raise money so my wife and I can fight her bitch of a cancer um, was amazing. And, uh, and you know, and Ben donated too, so it's incredible. <laughs> well, I think I speak for all of us when I say that you've become such a fan favorite and such an important part of this family that we're with you in this. And however we can help you, any person in this room, any person online watching, they'll, they'll do everything they can to help you guys fight this. I hit... I hear that now, and it's been made clear already, so thank you. Back to you guys.
powerful words from Paul Preston, uh, yep. realizing that today is about much more than just a silly little trivia game. And I echo his sentiments when I say thank you to all the fans, everybody in this community that comes together when we need you the most. And that is the case with Paul and Karen right now. And it's nice to see all the support that's coming his way. Please continue that support as they continue their fight and you enlist in the Army that Paul and Karen have set up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, this is beyond the storylines, beyond the game. And, and there's power in team and community. And, you know, I haven't seen Jen Sturcher cry since Cody called her bluff and said yes. So this is uh, <laughs> that's a powerful moment. And now we go back to the woman who did say yes to Cody Decker. That is Jen Sturger, and she is now with the winner of today's match. Remember the horsemen? There's five of them now. Ben Bateman. I hate you so much sometimes, Ken. Oh, Ben, congratulations on a well-fought match. You you burned through your last JTE. Did you think that he wasn't going to get his five-pointer, or were you just taking that chance? Uh, I just needed to be sure I had the right answer, and uh, I've learned JTEs are worth points, so use them when you need them. And uh, I had the name in my head. I just... What if you say the other monster? You know, you want to make sure you're right, so. Absolutely. And now you're going to be facing Brendan the Kid in this tournament. Yeah. Have you watched him play a lot? Yeah, I know Brendan. Hey. Hey, man. Hey, Brendan. Hey. How you doing? I'm so excited. I can't, I'm still, so, I'm wearing my, a blazer too, you know? Yeah. Looking like you. So I'm, yeah. yeah. Of course. No, I, I'm really excited, man. I, I've been a big fan of yours, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. I can't wait. And, uh, you know, you, uh, everyone, it's going to be great. I think you might have stolen my wallet once, but still a great manager. Great manager. <laughs> And of course, you know, of course, Dan, you know, the goat. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, Dan. How's it going? What? He's right there. Sorry. Hey, how's it going? Sorry. Did you, uh, did you need something or? No, it was just staying in the water. So gotcha. Walk through. Excellent. There's a key word there, and it was fan. You know what? Uh, as you watch this match, you understand what a manager is for and a faction is for. The challenge made all the difference in this game. So anybody in this draft coming up, keep an eye out. Are you guys worried at all about what's going to happen to the horsemen with this draft? In the immortal words of Alfred E. Newman. Get a zipper? What, me worry? Cool. Uh, you know, uh, the top teams and players are protected, uh, as Christian mentioned, his announcement of the nuke. So... You know, we'll be fine. We're the best players in the league, and that means we're going to stay on the teams if our managers want us to stay there. So uh, today was a great match. Uh, one more time, just it's such an amazing thing for, for Paul and his wonderful wife to show up today, both fighting in, in, in this and, and obviously fighting against something a lot tougher than the Shimodan competition, and I'm, uh, I'm just very impressed by that. So uh, all, all gameplay aside, a uh, round of applause for those guys. That's so right. And like we've already said, please, if you can afford it at home, Please join us in this fight. You're part of this family too, and it means the world to Paul and everyone here in the studio. Back to you guys. Thank you, and once again, you can check out uh, our Facebook page, The Movie Trivia Schmodown. You go to the fan page, or you can go to our Twitter feed and check out how you can help Karen and Paul continue their battle. Ken, when you look at this match, we have Ben advancing. We have Paul falling in a valiant effort in round number two. What do you expect to see from Bateman and the kid? That should be a... Uh, Fun matchup with a lot of plucky optimism. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it, you know, if it's like me in seventh grade and then and Ben's me in eighth grade when you realize you're actually got to do this for real. <laughs> Junior high is uh, buried, yeah. Yeah, it is. Age uh, a lot in those years. No, I, I, I really do like the kid. I, I, not only is he just a great performer and talented actor, but I, you know, I think he knows his stuff. And with, with Bibbs in his corner, uh, I'm sure they're going over stuff too. Uh, he, he do not look past the kid, and I know Ben Bateman does, but I think Ben is on a quest to prove something to himself and the league, and that's pretty powerful, even though those darn horsemen. Uh, it was like, is Roca still talking? No? I, I believe Roca is that. still okay. Uh, okay. doing a post-game interview somewhere. Yep. We are going to say thank you and good night. That is Ken, the pit boss, Knapsack. Check out all of his Star Wars-related material, including the audiobook version of Why We Love Star Wars. I am Mark Baby, Carrots Ellis. We'll see you real soon on the movie Trivia Schmalldown. Karen, Paul, we love you. We're with you. Mara, what's up? I have my Marvel Cinematic Universe disguise, and clearly Black Widow and uh, Captain America have taught me all the wrong things. Uh, I mean, they're just wearing a hat and sunglasses, so I... What are you doing hiding in a cabinet and disguising yourself anyway? I thought you were Robert Meyer Burnett. 
I'm clearly not, um, but the resemblance I, is uncanny. I I don't know what to make of that statement. Why did you think I was? Why were? Why would you care if I was Robert Meyer Burnett? Without admitting to any criminal activity, I might be stalking him. Um, why? I was promised a match, as you know, after losing to Mike at Spectacular, so uh, trying to make sure that he gets on the ball. Listen, uh, I'm going to stop you right there. Uh, no need to worry about Robert Meyer Burnett. He is a thing of the past. No longer in charge. I thought you were telling me he died. <laughs> um... <laughs> No, I'm a little concerned by your flippant attitude towards death. Why? Okay, but so you were. So let's circle back. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I have been sleeping in his dumpster far longer than I needed to. Uh, so who do I need to talk to? Uh, to to me. Uh, yeah, we're doing that. Yeah, this is how, how fortuitous. Here we are. Uh, yeah. Um, listen, I, I the the division is definitely in full swing right now. So mm -hmm. I I totally totally understand why you've been having a tough time getting this match going, but I promise I will do everything in my power to to make it happen, because as you say, you were promised that automatic rematch, and, you know, I, I wasn't the one that set that up, but I will I will carry through and make good on that. Well, you know, a couple decades of ballet is going to be incredibly flexible, so I, uh, I'll still hold you to it, though. Okay, so uh, I'll see you then later. I'm sorry, what?